So welcome everyone to another InterHeart Kuwait session. I'm very excited to have Brian Jones with us, an experienced meditator and teacher and guide of heartfulness meditation. And today he's going to be discussing unity in silence. So blessings to everyone who, who is here. Thank you, Najud, for having me on again. I really appreciate that. And it's been so nice to meet you and get to know you. Um, I'm happy to do these types of programs. And just a little bit about myself. I, I began meditation when I was very young, about 12 years old. And most of my life I have spent teaching it and sharing it with others because meditation is something that's universal. It's not really, uh, it's not really bound to a religion or even to spirituality. It's uh, very scientific in many ways. So people from the science community meditate. We have doctors around the world that meditate. We have huge corporations, the biggest corporations in the world. All of them, every one of them uh, offer meditation. So meditation is, a, is actually a tool. It's a tool that we use to evolve ourselves, evolve our consciousness, which is a mis also a mysterious name for something we, don't, we little understand. But it helps us to settle our mind, to go within, and to, when we do this, and we let our thoughts settle, we're no longer limited by our patterns of thinking, which are always, you know, guiding us and influencing us uh, every day. We're completely patterned by our, from our past experiences. So meditation is a wonderful tool to still the mind and to tap into a deeper inner resource where all of our engagement with the past or even our you know, wishes for the future, all of that subsides. And now we can experience something that, that is more, more than just the now. Very often we hear, you know, meditate and be in the now. And this is something much more than that. When now is a time-based idea. So when we meditate, we're actually getting in touch with an infinite resource within. It's, there's no time, there's no space. Uh, it's something beyond that. And that really is the original state of our consciousness. And there's a word for this. When we go into deep meditation, there's a word for it. It's called samadhi. And samadhi means that we experience the original simplicity of our mind, the original simplicity of our mind. And that feels very, uh, very refreshing. Uh, you know, it's almost, we become potentialized when we do meditation like this. So today uh, we're going to meditate together and I'm going to guide us through it. We'll meditate for about uh, 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Now that may seem like a lot if you haven't meditated prior to this, but I'll just request you to be open because quite frankly, the mind is so used to being active that it, the mind thinks that's its natural state. And so it takes the mind, you know, five, 10 minutes to really settle and get into what we call the meditative or quiet state. And that's where we want to spend, you know, at least a few minutes in that state of consciousness. So the meditation we'll do today is very simple. I'll guide us through it. And you will see uh, that we'll rest on the heart. And then we'll be silent in that resting for some time. And then at, when it concludes, you're going to clearly hear me say that's all and I'll gently bring us out of the meditation. And look, this, the, the beauty of meditation, beyond all the things I've said already, is that as soon as we close our eyes in a group, we're already experiencing a sense of unity, okay? When we shut off our perception of who each of us is, okay? We're no longer apt to judge by appearances. We're not trying to engage or judge somebody by the depth of their knowledge or 
the clothes that they wear or their status in life. When we close our eyes and go within, we experience all of us, no matter who we are or where we're from, all of us experiences a profound sense of unity. And more than ever, the world really needs to experience that. And I've dedicated my life to doing that. So let's get started. So let's uh, sit first, sit comfortably. Let's sit comfortably and close our eyes. And let's start by taking a slow, deep breath in. And let it go. And feel your body is relaxing. Another slow, deep breath in. Let it go. So let's very gently bring our awareness out of our head and let it come down and rest on the area of our heart. Just rest your awareness on the heart. Now I'd like you to rest on the source of light or lightness. That's already present within the heart. And feel it's drawing you inwards. If you find your thinking again, just very gently, come back to the source of light in the heart and feel you're going within. Let's stay with that thought. Whenever you're ready, you can <clears throat> gently open your eyes. Okay, I'll start. Brian, I, I think I've wanted to ask you this for a while. Um, is how does one transcend conditioning? It's oh, a great question. Well, in the practice that I do, which is called heartfulness, there's two parts. One is the meditation that we just experienced. That's you, something we usually do in the morning to start our day off and set the tone for the day. But the second part of this practice is something different it's called cleaning. And it's a different process. 
where at the end of our work day, when everything's finished, we sit comfortably and we make a determined thought that all of the day's conditioning, influences, impressions, whatever they are, are now leaving me. And how are they leaving me? They're leaving me out my entire body, my, from the top of my head to my tailbone, in the form of smoke or vapor. It's a visualization. And you do it with a real sense of determination. So you really, we don't think about all of the influences and conditioning that we experience through the day. We just have made the thought once that it's all leaving. And how is it leaving? It's leaving in the form of a smoke or vapor. Again, just an idea to get started with. You know, it's an amazing thing that this simple technique, uh, when done regularly, you feel like you're so relieved of everything from the day, you feel like you're starting the day fresh again. It's a very powerful aspect of this method. So when we do that, uh, we go to bed at night, we can lay our head on the pillow, we're not carrying anything around left from the day, and we get a great night's sleep, wake up in the morning, we do this meditation, and it starts to form a complete cycle that's really rejuvenating ourselves. That's what we're doing. We're actively participating in our own inner evolution. So, you know, that's how we get rid of the past conditioning. And when we sit together like this too, and we experience that infinite, that moment of uh, letting go, um, we're, we're letting go of the past influences there too. So it's a, it's a process. The Jude, you know, we've spent a lifetime gathering all of these impressions and influences and conditioning. And so, you know, we need to take a little while to, you know, <laughs> to get rid of that. It takes a little while to get rid of them. But even within the first few weeks of meditation, you experience a profound difference. And that continues. And I've been doing this for 45 years. And I can tell you, I am as enthused and happy about meditating every day now than I've ever been my whole life. It's just been a wonderful experience. Does anyone else want to share something or no pressure? Just want you to know that just I'd just like to say thanks very much to both of you, um, and especially Byron for guiding us through that meditation. This is, um, well, I, I, meditation is part of my lifestyle and daily practice. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long, uh, but it's been several years. And I also, I think like Brian, I have a morning routine where I meditate. And um, it's 30 minutes of sort of silent sitting. Great. And I, I find that someone once told me, um, if you wake up in the mornings and then sort of get out of bed and you look back at your bed, sort of the, the pillows uh, here and there and the duvet all sort of messed up. And if you ask yourself, does that look like a restful activity happened there? <laughs> you probably think no. And especially for my bed, I mean, I'm tossing and turning and it's not. So the first thing that, so that I get the most rest in some sense out of that first. So the first thing I do in the morning when I get up is that I, I meditate, I sit still, and I almost that I get more rest and more uh, of a, a sense of, okay, I'm, I'm charged up, I'm ready for the day from that half an hour than I do from whatever it is, you know, five, six, seven hours of sleep. And that, that's always stayed with me. So and that's why I put that at the start of the, my day. And uh, I also uh, find benefits in, well, I actually have a, and then I do meditation and some silent drawing as well. That's part of my, been my daily routine for some years now. And I count all three of those as meditation using the Zen uh, concept of it, that actually you can be absorbed in some kind of activity like yoga uh, or like silent drawing is something my friend suggested and i find those also help in a different way i think silent sitting with eyes closed 
is really the sort of the par excellence of what we just did now. But the others also help me slowly sort of focus my mind and wake up and my mind starts applying itself to something without music playing or without listening to um, you know, the news or while I'm doing it or, go, or, or things that other people may do while they're doing those activities. So those uh, have really helped. And, and I share exactly Brian's um, feeling that compared to many years ago, and now I've not been doing it for nearly as long as Brian, I know that. Maybe it's been about five years, I would say, that I've been doing this practice. But I, I may miss sleep, and my job is very, be very tense and long hours. I may miss some hours of sleep, but I can't remember the last time I missed a meditation for this reason, because I just don't feel like uh, I'm myself if I don't do it. So uh, wonderful to also have it in the middle of it. It's five, uh, five in five p.m. in the evening for me. So it was a uh, and always wonderful to be guided as well by an experienced hand. So thank you. Hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's that's wonderful. I, I love the drawing idea. I I too am an artist. These are some of my paintings back here, so I can really relate to that. Amazing. Yeah. I'm not an artist at all, and, and I actually I have I draw my iPad and I just delete it. I was saving them, and we were sharing it with my friend in an album, and we were sort of and then she's kind of stopped, and then I was just sharing, and I just thought, okay, there's no point in doing this. But I really wanted just to get into my mind that I'm not doing it for something or for someone. It gets wiped clean, and for the next day, it's just that's it. Um, it's, so, it's very zen, yes. <laughs> very, very zen, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no drawing or drawer. There's just the act of drawing. 